It always resonates, and uh, I appreciate the humor. I appreciate the silliness. Uh, it just reminds me not to take myself too seriously. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah. Um, anyways, you, you know what they say, that uh, when, uh, when one is connected, all questions really disappear. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, that said, it's kind of interesting that uh, the topic today is um, uh, is about uh, Nis. Let me see if I can say it. Uh, Nisargada Maharaji, right? Did I say yeah, that right? <laughs> I think so. I mean, like, I'm not the one to ask my dyslexia, but I think it's Nisargada Maharaj. Oh, okay. <laughs> but so, so, but you um, almost got it right. I think you just missed maybe a G or a T or something. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am that. And uh, yeah, I think I've uh, previously uh, read some of that. Uh, uh, current, so I'm saying that it's kind of like uh, interesting is because I'm currently reading uh, a book uh, by um, Gaitonde Mohan, who is translating uh, Self-Love, the Original Dream from Sri Naragasha, Naragata Maharaji. So uh, you direct point to the reality. And, uh, you know, to have you share your thoughts on it. But uh, uh, so the synopsis is that uh, he talks about, uh, and in quotes, the world always appears to be very old to the one who uh, cognizes it. In reality, the world has appeared with your consciousness. The world is, no, is known because of you and it resides within you. Just as a web is created by the saliva of a spider, the world is a creation of your own light. But you believe that you exist in the light of the world, which is the cause of your bondage. In reality, the world appears in your light. Um, so I, I guess it's kind of like, it goes on, the individual soul believes that its existence depends upon the world that is seen, but in fact it is otherwise. The experience of the world depends upon it. You are all that exists. Uh, I, I don't know, it's so kind of like a, uh, to talk about the shift in perspective, in uh, perception, and that, um, the and what they talk also about is the suffering is because of sense the sense of separation mm -hmm. excuse me the sense of separation and so with this kind of like it's really cognitive in other words it's a mind thing here it's like a mind bed <laughs> but um can you shed some light on this uh perception Mm. Um, just to clarify, you know, whether the world exists, when the world is old. The world is um, old to somebody that keeps looking at it through time. When you look at um, life through time, then you're always seeing your past images of it. So you're seeing a tired image, image. you're not seeing something fresh. So it's like um like with lovers or with your partner with like to really love your partner you can only see them now but most people see their partner as their story that they've been in the past their story um of what they've done wrong what they've done right who they are their behavior and what they're going to be in the future and that's a yeah, dead that's, story that, that's not that's true. a trap that i find myself all the time in yeah. <clears throat> including what, relationships where yeah. i uh you know, I, I cognize it, I cognize and, and judge and all that. So uh, and that's that a kind dead, of like creates a barrier. That's a dead story. Like that's not alive. What's alive is this. Like what's alive is part, this moment. Yes. And, the, and this is like when you see someone as mystery, when you see someone as freedom, as this moment, as infinite possibility, that's when you truly love them. They're not as what they've done, not as what they're going to do, not as what you're going to do, not what you can get from them, but just as this, totally unconditioned. When you see that, you recognize 
there is a character for sure but beyond that that is where you truly meet that's who they, they truly are and that's the same with the whole of life like the reason that people feel disconnected is because they're looking at life through a story of what they know and their childhood traumas and their childhood ways of being rather than what it actually is and then this creates seeking which is more mental activity like right now this is fresh this is mysterious which brings me to the next point can this be cultivated you know and the only time that i experienced it is through deep meditation where everything disappears and just the um it's indescribable because there's nothing there it's just this mm. and it, it, it it's um it's just this incredible joy, you know, um, you know, joy without any reason, mm. uh, bliss without any reason. But once I go back to, you know, day to day life, I feel like I'm being bombarded with, you know, all that stuff, yeah. you know, all that, you know, um, pain and you know, the suffering and the judgments and the worry and the fears and the what ifs you know and it, it bombards me you know uh the mind just goes um you know wants that revenge of its time taken away but made it by meditation so to speak <laughs> mm. yeah um i really enjoy talking to you um but um when i talk with someone like um i find it a little bit hard when um and i'm i'm just as like guilty of this because we're we're like one energy and right now we're creating one energy which is one dance between us and i'm just like putting out a request that we just um would it be possible if we just give each other more space before be between the end of what we say and then the next person speaking Oh yes, sure, absolutely. I can I can do that too, but I could feel a little bit like um, we were interrupting each other, and then it's like you don't know who interrupts first, <laughs> so you no, get to this like done like because I want to get in as much as I can. Yeah. So. and then so I and then I f <laughs> I want to finish what I say, so I like carry on too because otherwise I forget it. So, but it's it's two people. It's not just you. But if if we could just give each other a bit more space, that would just be easier for me in the communication. Absolutely. Danke, I appreciate it. So what was your last question? I forgot now after saying that. Or your last comment? I believe that my last comment was that um, uh, that that energy of uh, uh, mundane life, or let's call it mundane life, call the troubles of life or the uh, characteristics of the personality can be so overwhelming mm. that it almost wants, it wants to take control. Mm. Yeah, totally. And yeah. Uh, last but not least, I just want to say that I always get back to uh, my belief that uh, in the end, it's really grace, mm -hmm. you know, and the shift cannot be um, cannot be forced. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that you mentioning a lot, a lot of times you mention you talk about the shift and, uh, and that the human part cannot force that. And so it is really surrender and surrender cannot be forced either. So, uh, you know, and I do find myself fighting so hard and seeking so desperately that yeah. it's kind of like that. Um, uh, merry-go-round where I get, you know, the suffering is so acute that I am forced to surrender and I get the relief for a while until I start seeking again. And it's like that vicious cycle.
I think that it may have to do with uh, pain body and uh, a lot of old stuff. Mm. And presence, like the most important part is becoming present to it, but it's not somebody's job to become present. It's the way, it's the way things are. It's noticing that your essence that which you truly are is always here and experiencing. And when the when there begins to be more presence, so it might seem like it's an activity of the person putting its attention in presence, then you become more astute to what's actually being felt in the body. So it seems to go through these stages that you become more present and then you begin to perceive how your body is responding to the world and you're not trying to avoid it. So there can be all types of feelings that are happening very rapidly. You know, you can interact with someone and then there can be discomfort. There can be an image of a past lover and then there can be discomfort. None of that's inherently wrong. It's the difficulty of it and the suffering comes when you try to seek through time to avoid that. So you have an uncomfortable feeling, you have a longing come up, you have a desire come up, and then the mind tries to go into imagination and into thinking and into time or into activity or into browsing the internet to avoid what's actually being exper experienced. So it's all really coming back to what's actually happening now. And it sounds like it's an activity, and maybe it is partially an activity in the beginning because the person thinks it's a doer. But eventually it, it's seen that who you are is present, who you are has always been present, and then there's a shift of energy which goes back to presence, and it's a natural way of being. But it's really bringing everything in, like what are you feeling now? What do your toes feel now? What does your heart feel now? What does your solar plexus and your sacral chakra feel now, or your back feel like now? And the deeper you go into that, the more you'll realize that that isn't separate from everything else. There is no body versus the world. So if you've got pain in the, chak in the solar plexus chakra, when you really pay attention to it, you realize that the whole world is that pain. It's not separate from the world. If you've, like with your feet now, it feels like they're stuck on the end of your body and your end of your body is somewhere in space and time. But when you really pay attention to it, you realize that the feet and the world aren't separate from each other. And the feet aren't a particular size and don't have a boundary. That's all mind made. You're making up this image of you that's a particular size, that's interacting with the world. And freedom is the end of avoiding what you actually are in every moment. But it's not really an activity. It's a recognition, and an energetic shift. But it maybe seems like an activity in the beginning, like you, you become more conscious of yourself, you're putting your personal awareness in the I am, you're paying attention to your body, you're paying attention to the stories which go into elongated seeking. And the, the fundamental part to it is that there is nothing in time that will free you. The I am, this emptiness, this vastness, this mystery, which is now, is the freedom. Not the story. Not the intellect. Yeah, it keeps going back and forth. Mm. I find myself many a time in that space, and that mm. keeps, you know, uh, maybe that is the process. Um, uh, mm. I think I think I could totally talk so about the um, the momentum mm. will still. Uh, even if there is some realization, the momentum of the, I don't know, call it small self, or call it the ego, or call it uh, the pain body, you will not just automatically stop. Mm -hmm. I wish that it would, but uh, <laughs> sort of like as its momentum. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I think you also talk about, you know, constantly trying to go, you know, lose oneself and go back. Mm -hmm. 
to presence, bring self back to presence. Mm. Knowing deeply that it's not your activity, because whose activity would that be? There isn't actually an inherent you there. Well, can that, well currently it may just be uh, a concept, mm. you know, like to talk about the the difference between the seeing and the seer, mm. you know, and that I am really the seer, mm. but. I don't know if it's, um, you know, I doubt that it's yet realized, um, mm. you know, uh, versus, you know, being just a, a concept, trying to go for that seer, you know, thinking that seer is in the back of the head, you know, trying to go to that place, you know, or by process of elimination. Meaning, you know, seeing everything that is and saying, you know, it is not that. Mm. Mm. No, it's not that. <laughs> I was going to say it's not that, it's this, but that's kind of really funny. <laughs> <laughs> not that, it's this. <laughs> it kind of really made sense. I was really thinking. <laughs> yeah. Which that are we talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could turn it into like a rap, not a rap song, like mm -hmm. a, a trance song. Not this, not that, not this, not that. It is this, it is that. <laughs> nice. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now here we are. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Oh, well, thank you so much for calling in. Thank you. I really enjoyed your questions and your quote. And thank you for giving me more space. I needed that tonight. Thank you. Thank you for trusting me and being, and being open. Oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> okay, have a great day. Yeah, you too. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. I'd so appreciated where you can say you can put out a request of what you want to someone and someone can hear that like it's so impersonal often when we hear requests from people we take it personally and then we get defensive but it's so impersonal it's beautiful so thank you for that david okay i'll just